I'm a very ancient being, that problem is like this. <laughs> and to <clears throat> what can I tell you about myself? I just don't know what part will interest you. But uh, only thing I can say that I was born with this understanding and awareness that I have to <clears throat> find out a method by which I could give our mass realization to people. I was a realized soul, of course, I knew all about it from my very childhood. But the problem was that how to make many people get it, because if one person gets it <coughs> or if person, one person has it, if one person is an incarnation, people don't understand it. Not only that, but they may even try to destroy such a person. That's what happened to all the saints who came on this earth. Christ was crucified, Muhammad Sahib was given poison, because they were ignorant. <coughs> they did not know what it was, what was he saying. So it was important, first of all, to find out a method how to give them a mass realization. <coughs> and from that angle, I just thought that this is why I am on this earth and I have to do this job, for which I wanted to study about human beings. I took my birth in a Christian family and that to a family which was Protestant family, because I felt that Protestants are fanatics but very sophisticated. <laughs> And they rationalize everything to such an extent that nobody can see beyond it. So I better take my birth in them. And my father and mother had already taken birth, whom I had chosen as my parents. They were great people, realized souls, and especially my father was a person who knew why I was on this earth. Even my mother knew about it. So, a special rapport was between them and me and they could understand why I was busy meditating or finding out about how to give realization to others. Then I would say my father was a very learned man who knew about fourteen languages, who translated Qur'an and Sharif into Hindi, who was a member of the Constituent Assembly, he made our constitution, also he was the only Christian to be elected in those days. And then my mother was a nurse in mathematics, all very well educated and nice people. They dedicated their life to the cause of freedom of India. And I also felt that that was very important because if, uh, if we are not free, we cannot do anything on religious basis. This one thing is to be free from this slavery. <coughs> and that's how I also helped them a lot and we, our whole family suffered a lot and I went through terrible times, terrible times at very young age. I was with Mahatma Gandhi also because he liked me very much as a child so I stayed on with him, then I used to come back to study again, go back to him. He used to call me Nepali because my face is a Nepali face <coughs> and he used to talk to me as if he's talking to his grandmother sometimes. It was very sweet and he was a very sweet man extremely sweet person to children, very strict with himself and strict with others, elderly people. But with children he was very, very sweet and kind <coughs> and would try to learn from children a lot of things. It was surprising how he understood that there's a lot of wisdom with the children sometimes than with the older people who are mixed up. <coughs> now we got our independence and we had a very bad setback because of the partition we had in our country. <coughs> and I was studying in Lahore Medical College there because I wanted to know about medicine, what these people call such and such thing because I knew all this, but I knew about the body, I knew about everything, the, what you call the complete nervous system, but I did not know what was the vocabulary attached to it, so I studied there for two years. And after that this 
war broke out, so I had to discontinue with my studies and my parents wanted me to get married. And then I found uh, that my marriage was important, I agreed to marry and I married this gentleman, Mr. C. P. Srivastava. <coughs> then during all that time my only pastime or the full-time work was to find out about human beings, what's the problem they have, how what they avoid reality, how they shun it, how they run away from it, what are their problems, how are they seeking, what do they have to offer, what will they accept, how to handle them. It was quite an intricate question. Every person provided a new, uh, new sample of problems and I had to fight it out in a way that it was a system which I knew how to do it because to enter into somebody subtly to understand the problems of the Kundalini, you can go into the journey and find out about a person. <coughs> and then I found out the permutations and combinations of their problems. So like it is like you can say that uh, like periodic tables, you have to divide them uh, into three, then into seven, then into their permutations and combinations. So you can imagine three into seven raised to power eternity. <laughs> it was like that. But doesn't matter, it worked out <coughs> and in uh, the year 1970, on the 5th of May, I was a re little bit hesitant at that time, I thought I should wait, but certain circumstances made me to open the last center. <coughs> and when I opened the last center, we started working with others. It on our masque. 